So let's prove this property. So again, we are assuming that u is finite dimensional. It's a crucial assumption. And we're going to prove that u perp perp is again u. We start to proving the easiest, the easier direction, which is that u is a subspace of u perp perp. And this is always true. For this, we do not need u to be finite dimensional. So how do we prove this? Well, we want to show that one set is a subset of another one. How do we typically show this? We start by saying let u be in u. And the idea is we have to conclude by showing that u has to be in u perp perp. So if this is the u here, this is the space here. So if we can do such an argument, we have proved the inclusion in this direction. So let's do the argument. We know that for every vector v in u perp, by definition of u perp, v is orthogonal to u. That's the definition of u perp. But this holds for all vectors v in u perp, which means then by definition of u perp perp, u has to be in u perp perp. u is in u perp perp. Why? Because we have just proved that u is orthogonal to every vector v in u perp. And u was chosen as an arbitrary element of the space u. So we can conclude that u is a subset of u perp perp. So now we are left with the other direction. We want to prove that u perp perp is a subspace of u. Now we need the assumption that u is finite dimensional. And how do we prove this? As usual, we start with some vector from the first set. And after some argument, we're going to show that this vector is in u. So if we start assuming that u is here, and we conclude that u has also to be here, this gives us the inclusion we are looking for. So let's do the argument. We start with some vector v in u perp perp, and we know that our space v can be written as a direct sum of u and u perp. So let's decompose v. v has to one component u, which is in u, one component w, which is in u perp. Now, since u, we already know from the previous part that u is a subset of u perp perp, then we can subtract v and u, and u perp perp is a subspace, so v minus u also is in u perp perp. Yes, how come? Well, v is in u perp perp, and u is in u, which is a subset of u perp perp. Now, on the other hand, we know that v minus u is w by definition. Yeah? We, d we defined u and w to be the unique vector such that v would be written as u plus w. u minus v, v minus u is w, and w is in u perp. Okay? That's how we define w. We define that u is in u, w is in w. So this is in u perp. That means, well, w, which is in u perp, it equals v minus u, which is in u perp perp. So w is orthogonal to itself, yeah? because w is in this space, but it's also in this same space perp. w is orthogonal to itself, which means w is 0. If w is 0, v equals u, but u is in u. And that's what we have to prove. We had to prove that v is in u. So since v was arbitrary, we can conclude that u perp perp is a subspace of you.